Hello everybody. Um, the painting that you see before you is the anatomy lesson of Dr. Tolk. It's painted by Rembrandt during the Dutch Baroque period in 1632 and it's oil on canvas. Some of the things that's really cool about this painting is the use of tenorism, which is the dark, which is the use of dark and light colors. Hey, this, this is the Thankful Poor um, by Henry Osawa. It was done in uh, 1894. Uh, it's realism, it's oil on canvas. I, I'm personally, uh, I'm able to connect with the painting, I guess, because like I grew up, you know, you know what I mean, like in poverty, and I wasn't, I always didn't really have much, so it's kind of, you know what I mean, it has like some symbolism, and I'm able to relate to it. Um, the piece that I have is the St. Francis Altar piece by um, Bonaventure Berlingeri. Sorry, I said way off, but um, it was made in 1235. It was a late Gothic, early Renaissance painting. It um, is really inspired by like the Byzantine. Byzantine era with its like flatness and like just the just like how standstill St. Francis is and it fo also focuses on like the stigmata which was like really big in the Byzantine era uh, time. Um, it is made of temp tempera on uh, wood which is like a process between um, when you mix egg yolk and pigment together and you layer it on like multiple times it's like a very tedious process because um, it dries very quickly. This portrait is the nude descending the staircase done by Mar Marcel Duchamp in 1912. The portrait is a 20th century portrait which contains elements of cubist and futurist. The portrait is um, it's highly regarded as a modernist classic yet has received a lot of controversy and commentary and parodies over the time with its background where it was presented first at the 28th exhibition at the Independence Art Society in Paris, France, where the painting's name was only revealed to the general public and not the portrait itself. And that's because the, the hanging committee, which was also run by Duchamp's brothers, they claimed that the portrait was not in line with the rest of their nudes, with the nude portraits, and it was also too, clo too close to Italian futurism, which was strange at the time since the Cubists um, were actually fond of foreign arts and artists. And they, they did not allow Duchamp's art to actually be presented, but it was still heavily regarded as a great piece, even though it wasn't really generally viewed. And then he um, brought the piece to the Armory Show in 1913 in New York City. This is Artemisia Gentileschi. Um, this painting was done around 1638. Um, it's oil on canvas. It's also Italian Baroque style. Um, Artemisia was taught how to paint in her father's studio because she didn't have a lot of privileges like other male painters. Um, she was actually sexually assaulted by one of her father's co-workers and a lot of art critics say that her background and her like a lot of her struggles and troubles um, take away from the paintings that she you know her talent and I actually think that because of the struggles that she went through makes her work more prominent and um, fed into like how how she painted and the style that she did and she paints a lot of very strong like female characters. This is the Mona Lisa right here. Uh, most of you guys know it. It's, uh, 1504 is made by Leonardo da Vinci. It's one of his most uh, well-renowned paintings. It's uh, oil on poplar. They found a painting in his workshop that looks exactly like this and it when the two were put together makes like a 3D painting and it could be the uh, first 3D painting ever created by men. Stay behind that. And uh, also it was stolen in 1911 by Vincenzo Peruglia or something like that. And um, it wasn't found until two years later. And it, it wasn't even famous as much as it is now until it got returned. This woman won. It's by William Kooning, and it was done oil on canvas between 1950 to 1952. The reason why it took him two years is because he, like Pollock, was very into the process of making art. So 
his, as his wife said, he probably scraped this painting off about 200 times before he finally stuck with this one painting. And even his art dealer said that sometimes when he would turn in paintings, he would paint so vigorously that the canvas would have like holes worn in them. So it was almost like he wanted to be a part of his art. And it was very like a very aggressive style of painting, as you can see by the strokes. Like, I really like this painting because I think there's a great amount of depth and color in the sky, and you get a sense of the waves and the typhoon coming on from the left side. To show that that wasn't just, you know, what they did. They weren't just proper women that just sat on the table. And they, that was like their job as well. And it's also, she drew a lot of inspiration from Japanese woodblocks. The two servants in the background are digging in her casillon for her clothes. Um, that's the chest that's usually given as a gift for marriage. Um, they also say this was probably painted in honor of this marriage that happened four years prior to this painting. The name of the painting is called Self Portrait. It was finished in 1548, so it was during the High Renaissance. It's all on wood, and it's made by Katarina von Hemmesen. Uh The original dimensions, I don't know if this is like accurate, but it was a foot by nine inches. It was current, I don't know if it's currently held now, but the last time I remember it was in Kunst Museum, Basel, which is in Switzerland. Um, what also is really cool about this is that at the time, for High Renaissance, they used the portraits as their identity. But she also, what made this cool is that also she was the first Northern European uh, woman to make a portrait. Um, and whatever, what, what she did was to give herself credit. If you can't see it because it's small, but here she wrote herself, made by Kenneman Van Hensen. She wrote with the year that she finished it, so it was 1548. And then she wrote the age that she was at the time. So she was 20 years old. She was also, she was born in uh, 1528 and died at, at 1587. So she was only 60 years old when she died. And that's Kenneman Van Hensen. Giovanna, she was a noble woman from Florence that made Lawrence Ternaboni. And um, he was from Melf, which can be sh depicted by the pearls and jewelry she's wearing. I like this one because it's, even though she's like not looking at the painter, she shows like an air of confidence and she's standing up straight. Um, the same year it was painted in 1488. It was the same year she also died from childbirth. So Julian, what is something you admired about this class? I uh, really like learning about the uh, paintings from different times, and uh, I thought our professor was very funny and uh, intelligent. One of the things I definitely admired about this class was learning about the different kind of paintings, the styles that they used, a lot of um, what the artists went through themselves and how they expressed that through the paintings. That's one of the things I definitely admired about this class. Definitely getting to learn about the artists of the past um, and their most famous pieces, and how they like rose to like uh, how to be fam like rose to being famous with their arts. I know you took a trip to the Met. What was your most what was the most memorable thing from that trip? The paintings I saw of Jesus, especially the one when he was carrying the cross, that one really hit me. I was just looking at him and, like it was funny though because he didn't have an expression on his face. He was just like I got this, and that was really funny to me. Cause like no 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 mere human can do that. You know what I mean? It was the cross was huge, but he just carried it like nothing. <laughs> so that one hit me the most. Jackson Pollock is definitely my favorite favorite artist because of his you know his diversity and his everything he does is like motion. It's it's amazing. Uh, what's one of the many things that you admired about this class? I think learning about the time periods that was like a big thing. Um, like a different time periods and like a lot of the struggles that they went through that inspired them to make these arts. So. Hello. <laughs> Uh, we're here with uh, Martin Dominguez, our professor for our history. Do you want to say anything to the class? Yes, you guys were amazing. I love you guys, and I wish you the best, the best, the best, and keep going. Uh, I see great success in your future. All right. <laughs>